Now, a lot of y'all know I like tying old historic flies, just flipping through some old book and finding some fly that if it's not forgotten, it almost is. But I'm not gonna do that today because I also like to tie fishable flies, which incidentally may just be the name of my first book. Thanks to Bert Brocious for the recommendation, I think fishable flies would be a pretty good name for a book. But oh, before we get into today's fly, Quick congrats to Pete Yarrington for winning Jim Quick's 1957 Trout Fishing and Trout Flies. So, today's pattern. And I know some of y'all are thinking, oh great, another caddis pattern. And yep, it sure is. But it's really because they're so prevalent here on the East Coast, and I tie and fish them all the time. But this one, I picked it because I want to talk about the book I got it from. Now, it's Dave Hughes' Handbook of Hatches, published in 2005. Now, I've reviewed a lot of Dave Hughes' books on this channel, but I'm not gonna do a formal review on this one because it's not strictly a tying book. Now, he does have plenty of patterns in it, but it's more a book on etymology and what hatches a trout fisherman could be expected to encounter and how to fish them. But this is one of a handful of books that I do keep a couple of copies of. I have one of them up at my farm, and then one of them I keep here within arm's reach. And anytime I have a book with several tabs and notes all in the margin, then you know it's a book that I go to often. So no formal review for this book, but I do have a little bit of ad revenue left over from January, so let's give a copy of this book away. Now, if you're new here, how we do that, just leave a comment. Anyone in your comment, put the word hatch, H-A-T-C-H. -H. In a couple days, I'll go to the random comment picker, get a copy of this book in the mail to you. One caveat, unless you're overseas, then I'll probably have to send you a gift card. So that's it, this quill wing caddis. Really a simple pattern, probably won't take you three or four minutes to tie, but this thing's just a great all-around fishable fly. So there's one in the vise, just a simple little pattern, what Dave Hughes calls his quill wing caddis. Super simple tie, but also super effective. Now he says this is good and you know, as big as a 12, small as a 20. I typically tie these in 16s and 18s for a lot of the hatches we have here in Maryland. And I'm gonna use a thread color that I'm gonna make the body. So this is a, a done. I'll lay it down to the start of the bend. Now let's put some wax on and then a little bit of dry fly dubbing. And I'm gonna use, again, a dun color. This is just a, a micro fine. It's a synthetic. And I'm not putting it on thick. I really, I'm a little bit more than just painting the thread with it, but I want a pretty thin body and it's not gonna be very long. Okay, that's about all I want right there. Now for the wing, just some mottled turkey. And the one that I had in the vise at the beginning was this brown model, a pretty much natural, just an Ozark turkey. But I think that wing was a little bit too long for the color I'm wanting to do. So this is also an Ozark turkey, but it's a bleached one. So I cut the slip, you know, a little bit more than a hook gap because I'm gonna tie it on tent style. So what I do here, just lay it flat and then, you know, try to fold it over right, right in the middle. Sometimes you get one side of the wing a little bit longer than the other, and that's perfectly fine. It's gonna fish just fine. See that one, it's a little bit longer on one side than the other, but I'm not gonna worry the, the slightest bit about it. So let's go ahead and snip the front. And for the back, I kinda of do the same thing. I just, uh, Pull it flat and then cut it at an angle a little bit past the bend of the hook. And there we go, that's our wing right there. And since I'm kind of going with the dun color scheme here, the dun and olive ones are, are predominant here in the spring, here in the, on the gunpowder in, in Maryland. So I'm gonna tie a handful of these in dun. And really, I'm gonna go about four or five wraps, kind of however many you can get. And the hackle is pretty much sized to the hook, but we're gonna trim the, the bottom half in here, here in just a second. And so that hackle, yeah, that's probably oversized. This is probably big enough for a 14, but let's go ahead and do a whip finish. And now this next step, this is what's going to uh, turn it into a, not a high floater at all. Just trim these 
the bottom hackle, you know, about a hook gap, maybe even a little bit shorter here. And if you think about it, what causes a dry fly to float is the really fine tips of the hackle. They don't break through the surface film. Whereas when you cut them like that, they're gonna poke right through the surface film and this thing is not gonna be a high floater. It's gonna sit down in the water, kind of like these diving, egg laying adult caddis would do. So that's it, really simple tie, but super effective pattern. So I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.